From the prescripts, what do we discover about audience? A community also begins to emerge when we think about the audience of these letters. In all the prescripts except the letter to the Romans, we find the word ecclesia. And even in Romans, we find the term a lot in the last chapter. You can probably hear from the word ecclesia that it's the term from which we get in English a word like ecclesiastical. I don't mean to be confusing by leaving it untranslated a lot of the time. Instead, I use the word ecclesia because I want us to think and to wonder when we hear the word, what are the possible meanings of this term? It's usually translated church. But with Paul's letters, we're handling the very earliest materials in the New Testament, materials that existed before churches were built, materials that existed even before the term Christian had emerged and been coined. If we simply translate ecclesia at church, we might forget those facts. It's only about 300 years later that we get church structures. If we use the term church to translate ecclesia, we might be tempted to retroject a Gothic cathedral, a storefront sanctuary, a plain low Lutheran church building to the mid first century CE. But in the mid first century, those who were in Christ had no built structures for worship or gathering. Only 300 years later do we find church architecture. So let's not translate ecclesia as church quite yet in case it puts the wrong picture in our head. Still, Paul's letters address the ecclesia. What might that term have signaled to those who first used and heard it? Scholars have debated this and have come up with three choices. First, some think that the term ecclesia in Greek was a translation of the Hebrew term kahal, which signals a cultic congregation or assembly in Jewish thought. Second, others think that the term ecclesia may indicate that the earliest communities in Christ were like voluntary associations. In the ancient world, workers' guilds or religious clubs gathered together. Maybe that's what's meant by the term ecclesia. But the third definition may be the best. It's the idea of the ecclesia as a political civic assembly. This term is used in the classical period, say in the 5th century BCE in Athens, to refer to the assembly of the city. It's a democratic assembly, if admittedly made up of adult male citizens, not slaves, not women, not metics or foreigners. At the time of Paul's writings in Greek cities around the Roman Empire, political assemblies still met to engage in democratic debate and to deliberate what was best for their cities. The name they bore was ecclesiae, or in the singular, ecclesia. And this is the name that those earliest groups in Christ took up for themselves. In the New Testament, it's a term that we find not in the Gospels or other writings, but primarily in Paul's letters and in the Acts of the Apostles. In choosing to meet and to assemble, these earliest communities in Christ aren't unique. Jewish groups, groups of artisans, followers of Dionysus, among many others, all chose to meet, eat, drink, engage in worship, sing hymns, share funds, engage in conversations about ethics, philosophy, theology, and very practically what they should do in their lives. But it is interesting that a set of the earliest communities in Christ, those urban communities to which Paul traveled and which are written about in Acts, that those people adopted the term ecclesia as part of their identity. We can wonder, what were they trying to signal about how their community worked or how they ideally envisioned themselves? Was the ecclesia a place of democratic debate and deliberative discourse? of authoritative speeches and challenges to those speeches, of the busy roil of argument, struggle, and the testing of ideas. What do we know about these earliest audiences? In all cases but one, Paul addresses a city or a region. In reading the letters of Paul, we're getting an urban perspective into the ancient world. The letters are aimed at communities in Christ in key cities of travel and trade in the Eastern Roman Empire and to a community at Rome itself. They're aimed at the Roman provincial capital of Thessaloniki, at Galatia, a province in Central Asia Minor, at Philippi, a city resettled by Roman veterans, at Corinth, a trading center where former slaves rose to high rank. Philemon and other letters may have been written from Ephesus, a very important port city on the coast of modern-day Turkey. And Rome, of course, was the center of the empire. The ecclesiae to which Paul wrote lived in cities and took on the name assembly in this urban and civic context to refer to themselves. 